So a handshake scene around the world as President Trump and Kim Jong-un meet for the first time. And surprisingly, even the people of North Korea knew Kim was in Singapore for the summit, with the country's main newspaper offering front page of course, state-directed coverage. Joining me now is Lanny Chen. He's a former policy director for the Romney campaign and at the Hoover Institute now. Brian McKeon is a former deputy assistant to President Obama. Glad to have you both here. Brian, let me start with you. Um, the, I, I understand that there's a general feeling that the summit declaration is less than expected, but is it a step in the right direction? Well, certainly the meeting is an important step in the right direction, and now we'll begin a process of negotiation. And so I don't want to diminish that, but I, I do think uh, the statement was a little light on substance. It reminds me of the Peggy Lee song, Is, is That All There Is? There's mm -hmm. a lot less detail that it, than have been in prior statements of this kind. But, Lanny, is that possibly because the president envisions, and he had set expectations to say, you know, this is probably the first of what will be many meetings to come? Yeah, I think a lot of the hard work remains, Dana. And look, we have to bear in mind this important fact. This is the first time in the 65 some odd years since the end of the uh, or the cessation of conflict uh, on the Korean Peninsula that we've seen the leader of North Korea meeting with a sitting American president. So mm -hmm. there is some important imagery. There's some important sort of uh, pomp and circumstance that goes beyond just this meeting and in fact goes to the fact that we do have a lengthy process ahead. And I think it's important for us to bear that in mind. I do think about the North Korean people a lot. And Anna Fifield of the Washington Post tweeted this, that North Korea's main newspaper today features color photos of Kim Jong-un uh, walking around Singapore, a breathtaking modern city with an electricity supply that North Koreans can only dream about. Quite apart from the photos themselves, I can't believe North Korea reported this so quickly. Usually the regime takes days to report news. Here, they took only hours. Brian, based on your expertise at the National Security Council, what do you think this might indicate? Well, I think it indicates that Kim Jong-un is feeling confident in his position in stepping forward and having these negoti initial negotiations with President Trump. And he's certainly going to take a victory lap at home to show his people that he's mm -hmm. advancing their security interests and mm -hmm. he's on the world stage at a level with the president mm -hmm. of the leading country in the world. Meanwhile, Lanny, there's other news, of course, with the trade uh, summit that the president just came out of, the G7, before he went to Singapore. He talked about that a little bit in his press conference this morning. Take a listen. The picture with Angela Merkel, who I get along with very well, where I'm sitting there like this, that picture was we're waiting for the document because I wanted to see the final document as changed by the changes that I requested. That was a very friendly, I know it didn't look friendly, and I know it was reported like sort of nasty both ways. I was angry at her. She, actually, we were just talking, the whole group, about something unrelated to everything, very friendly, waiting for the document to come back so I could read it before I leave. Lanny, I had some sympathy for the president there, having been someone who like, looked at a photograph and said, well, that's actually not descriptive of, of what actually happened there. And do you think that maybe tensions amongst the G7 are not as difficult as the media has been reporting? Yeah, look, I think it's very easy for folks on the outside to try to craft a narrative around this. Obviously, uh, there were some uh, hurt feelings, some back and forth maybe before and during the summit. But the reality is only the folks in that room really understand what was going on. And the dynamic is very complicated right now. Look, the United States is in uncharted territory here when we think about our trading relationships with some of these countries, as well as the fact that you have the president reaching out to Kim Jong-un uh, in kind of a historic moment. So. You know, the, the, the status quo has been turned upside down a little bit, but I think it's uh, premature for us to draw conclusions about fraying alliances with Europe mm -hmm. when really all we have is a picture and a little bit of dialogue to go on. Yeah, Brian, one of the issues has been NATO and the contributions of the countries to NATO. The president wanting to deal with that even when he was on the campaign trail, and there started to be a little bit of movement in Europe. Do you think that there you might see even more after this G7 summit to try to come to the table with something that everybody can say they gave and they won a little bit? Well, quite apart from whatever happened in this room, there's a lot of tension in the uh, alliance and within our close partners because of the president's move on the Iran deal and the Paris uh, climate agreement and what he's done on trade. So you can't really Sure, we don't know what happened in that room and what that picture was about, but we do know there are real tensions between the United mm -hmm. States and its allies. Countries in Europe are stepping up with increased defense spending. They started doing it after uh, the Russians went into Crimea and eastern Ukraine. 
in the NATO summit that was held in 2014, and that's continued, and that's a good thing. Lanny, uh, last word to you on this uh, trade issue, especially when you know the the NAFTA deal still is not settled either. Right, and, and I think that is a big concern. I mean, the fact that we have not been able to reach an agreement. And look, the, the president wants to do bilateral agreements with Canada and Mexico. I get that. But that's extraordinarily difficult, particularly when we've been operating under the NAFTA regime now for, for two, uh, two decades. So hopefully they can reach an agreement. Hopefully they can move the ball forward. But right now it does not look like it's in a very good place. All right. Lanny Chen and Brian McKeon, I, I thank you for being with me today.